Hello Driving Intelligence Community. In part 6 of my Civic series, I'm going to do an assessment through the OBD2 port to find out if I've got any, uh, any modules that have any issues in the car. There's no check engine light, no ABS light, no maintenance required light, so uh, at least an external view of the car isn't indicating anything and the drivability is very good. So I'm going to see if there's anything hidden or pending in the, uh, in the modules and, uh, and if we have anything, we're going to find out today in this video. my handy blue driver it's plugged into the OBD port which is above the gas pedal um, it's at an angle as you can see here so now I just need to uh, start up the car and run diagnostics at this point I want to talk about two tools I use that are very critical in helping me when I'm trying to diagnose any vehicle that comes across my garage it's the blue driver I'll link this below I don't sell these I'm not affiliated with blue driver but I do like the tool and it's the phone and these two connect to each other through uh, uh, Bluetooth technology. Once this thing diagnoses what's going on or runs diagnostics, it will communicate to your phone, give you a list of all the things that are wrong or uh, potential issues. It'll also do data logging. And I actually drive around with this data logging on my uh, F-150 all the time just so I can watch all the parameters. It's an extra set of gauges for me. But the first thing I'll do is run diagnostics, see if there's any, uh, any hard or soft codes, pending codes. And after that, I'll do a test drive, and I'll look at things like fuel trim, uh, engine load, uh, spark advance, engine temperatures, etc. And that'll give me some indication of how the engine's running, um, even if there are no codes being tripped. Incidentally, with this vehicle, I ran codes, and we'll find that there is a problem with, uh, or at least it's a soft code, with the SRS system, the Supplemental Restraint System. And uh, I'm going to get into that in a separate video. But that was the only code that came up. Uh, when I was running diagnostics, it shows that I've got extremely negative fuel trims. And what that means is that it's pulling fuel out of the, uh, from the fuel map. It's, the fuel map is saying, at, this per, at these engine conditions, the engine needs this much fuel. But for whatever reason, the oxygen sensors and other sensors are telling the computer that there's too much fuel getting into the engine. And the computer is saying, pull back. And it's pulling back an excessive amount. I need to figure out what the problem is, but I'm going to show you how I go through the diagnostics, I track the, uh, the data logging, and come to some uh, conclusions about things I need to work on. I've run the complete codes, and what I'm seeing here is a problem. I've got a 41-11 no signal from driver front impact sensor. So I'm going to have to figure out where that sensor is and see if I've got uh, a continuity issue up there or a bad sensor. This has me concerned because obviously if there's an impact at that front location, the airbags not, might not deploy. Um, I'm not sure how this operates. Maybe uh, there's multiple uh, redundancy in this and that that one is not a problem. But in any event, whether there's redundancy or not, all sensors should be working properly. So that's something I need to check out. You can see that I'm running extremely negative fuel trims. And I need to determine what the problem is. I'd like to see about a total of a negative 10 or a positive 10 fuel trim measurement. Sitting here, at, this is about minus 18 plus, or well over 20 percentage points negative. So uh, we're gonna go through and see if we can't figure this out. Okay, so now that I know that I've got extremely negative fuel trims, I need to figure out what could contribute to that. Uh, there's a litany of issues. Uh, the things that I looked at were air filter, air, a restricted air filter could cause uh, limited airflow, which would cause the engine to pull back fuel. Problems with the mass airflow sensor, uh, spark plugs that are old and worn and not firing properly. Um, there could be some other issues. Uh, so I came up with a list and I started looking at those items. And, uh, and then the last thing I was trying to determine was what the fuel pressure is. And uh, we'll get into that at the end of the video. Okay, so I've got the airbox cover off. It's easy, three clips, and uh, the thing just pops right off. The air cleaner is very clean. There's no problem with this thing. Um, well, there's a little bit of dirt in there, but nothing that's going to cause a, uh, an obstruction for the uh, the air going into the, the engine. Uh, so I'm going to have to get in there and maybe see if, uh, if the throttle body is fouled up. Interestingly enough, as I was putting this back together, I noticed that the, uh, the hose that connects here, this hose, does not have a hose clamp. So I'm not sure if it's tight enough. It feels pretty snug, but I'm a little concerned <clears throat> that uh, it's not sealing completely. But then again, if that was the case, I'd be getting a lot of unmetered air 
and the engine would be more positive in its fuel trim, so it's not likely that that's the problem. I think what I'm going to do is get some uh, uh, throttle body cleaner, the kind that you spray in here while the engine's running, and see if that opens up some stuff around the, uh, uh, the throttle body because it's back here, and uh, that makes it a lot easier than having to take all this apart to clean that out. So we'll, we'll try that first and see if that, uh, that resolves the problem. Okay, so just to check uh, the vehicle operation again, uh, the engine temperature is up to 180 degrees. It should be close to uh, optimal. And here you'll see short-term fuel trim is still pulling a little fuel out, but the long-term fuel trim is really off. I'm continuing the data log and you can see that the negative fuel trims are significant, 24, 25 points negative. Uh, the uh, mass airflow sensor is the first thing I'm checking, and it says 0 0.3 pounds per minute, which is about 2.37. 2 uh, what did I calculate here? 2.3 grams per second. And uh, that's about the right range for an engine of this size. At this point, I've ruled out air filter and throttle body. So... I just mentioned mass airflow. What I'm going to do is check the mass airflow sensor to make sure that it's reading appropriately, and that's where the blue driver comes in uh, as a handy device once again. Uh, what I did was I held the throttle at various positions from 1,000 RPM up to 2,500 RPM, 500 RPM increments, so 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, and I recorded the, uh, the mass airflow rate, and I plotted that on a graph, and it should be linear. And what you're going to see in the next uh, few clips is that uh, it is linear, which indicates there's no problem with the mass airflow sensor. So now I've ruled out that as a, uh, a contributing factor to the problem with negative fuel trends. I took a few screenshots of my blue driver during this test, which shows that at 1,000 RPM, I was running 0 0.3 pounds per minute. At uh, 1,500 RPMs, 0 0.5 and so on, up until I got to 2,500 RPM, which is 0 0.9 pounds per minute. I graph that and you see here it's perfectly linear. So this indicates that the mass airflow sensor is operating as it's designed. First thing I'm gonna do is pull these coils or at least one of them and I'm gonna check one of the plugs to see if the plug is uh, degraded significantly. That might be a reason why it's not burning the fuel that it should be burning. I've got the, uh, the first plug out and the gap does look a little big. Uh, I'm going to measure it. It says it's supposed to be 0.039 to 0.043 inches. Got my gap tool out and I'm going to check that out right now. Turns out my eyesight is not as good as I thought. That is right at the right in the middle or almost in the middle. 0 0.040 is what I got on that plug. I'll check them all. Looks like the plugs are not the problem. 156 inch pounds is a proper torque setting for these spark plugs. I'm going to use my uh, micro torque wrench and set it at 160. A little bit more doesn't hurt. And then we'll move on to the next phase of trying to figure out why the fuel trims are off. At this point in my diagnosis of negative fuel trims, I've ruled out the air filter, spark plugs, throttle body, mass airflow sensor. So there's only one other area that I think I can think of to go to, and that's fuel pressure. Um, if I'm getting excessive fuel pressure, then the engine obviously is going to be pulling fuel, and that could be that there's a faulty uh, fuel pressure regulator in the vehicle. Um, all the other vehicles I've checked before have a return fuel system, which means that once the fuel pressure indicates that there's too much fuel pressure, it will release and open up a fuel path back to the gas tank. Since this is returnless, it only comes to the engine, it doesn't return, and Honda didn't make it easy to access fuel pressure without doing some additional surgery. So at this point, I decided since the vehicle, number one, is driving perfectly, and number two, I'm not getting any engine codes, uh, I'm not getting a check engine light, no problems like that. I was going to leave it well enough alone. Um, I would think that Honda would have a uh, protocol in the self-diagnostics to give you a check engine light if the fuel pressure uh, or if the, if the fuel trims were off too much. The rest of this video shows where I did a bit of a misstep because I was assuming that there was a return fuel system in here and I was looking for the fuel pressure regulator and a tap for my fuel pressure testing kit. Um, but you can watch that if you want, you don't have to. So I appreciate you watching the video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. You learned something from it. I definitely learned something from it this time. So if you did, give me that thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe. Those are two ways you can definitely help my channel. And I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence. Given I'd like to do some research first, I've been looking on the internet to figure out where the fuel pressure regulator is in this vehicle. Can't find it. Um, here's the coil packs, as you may know. And underneath this, there might be the fuel injector rail, or it might be behind there. I gotta see if I can find some access because I can't get behind the engine easily the way it's uh, set up. So I'm gonna take off this cover first. Looks like these are just cam lock, and uh, this should come up pretty easily now, and it does. And let's see what I find out, find underneath here, if I can get this, get this reset. All right, and that didn't help me at all. All that is, is the, uh, the coil uh, wiring harness, and some other wiring goes down to the alternator. So I gotta do a little bit more investigation.